what makes the hyperbolic sine and the hyperbolic cosine hyperbolic? Let's return to the regular sine and cosine and the unit circle. Fundamentally, the cosine and the sine are defined in terms of a line segment. We create this line segment. We look at the x and the y coordinate of this point. And traditionally, this line segment is defined via an angle. Here's another way you could do that. Instead of looking at an angle, you could look at the area of this region. The area of this region is not theta, it's theta divided by two, but that gives you an alternative way of defining the sine and the cosine. Instead of talking about angles, we could draw a line OP such that the area of the wedge P O W is one half of the angle we're looking at. And then we look at the X and the Y coordinate of this point as usual. Now, this definition, if you wanted to use it, has problems you'd need to resolve. The most obvious problem being that the unit circle has an area of a pi. So we could not use this definition to define the sine and the cosine of a number greater than two pi. However, flawed though it might be, this method of defining the sine and the cosine will make the hyperbolic of the hyperbolic trig functions make sense. The sine and the cosine here are being defined in terms of a conic section. An ellipse with eccentricity zero. You could change the conic section to a hyperbola x squared minus y squared equals one. And if you have some number theta whose hyperbolic sine and hyperbolic cosine you're interested in, you could create a region using a straight line, just like we did with the unit circle, this theta over two is not an angle, remember, it's the area of this region. And what is this point where the line segment hits the hyperbola? Well, you can probably guess it's the hyperbolic cosine, comma, the hyperbolic sine.